Every Christmas, some small child in a church, a school play, or just surrounded by friends and family at home will pick up a musical instrument just like this violin and proudly play the most beloved Christmas carol of all time. It may be a little out of tune, or perhaps not quite concert hall quality, but the love that pours out of that little instrument is what makes Silent Night so special year after year. Now translated into more than 124 languages, it's a simple carol, but one that has brought families back together, given hope to the hopeless. A carol that in more than a few small ways may have changed the course of history. But every Christmas, it's still played by that small child around a tree full of gifts. The Vienna Boys Choir may be the best known and certainly one of the finest singers of this legendary Christmas carol. And in fact, it is their home in Austria where the story of Silent Night began. Perhaps it was the Austrian hills, in many ways like the hills of Bethlehem, that inspired the creation of the carol. Or perhaps it was the crystal clear moonlit Austrian nights, similar to that crystal clear night when the angels split the sky, singing their chorus of praise about the birth of the Savior of the world. We may never know the exact circumstances, emotions, or moment when Silent Night was born, but we can discover the place, the story, and the tradition it inspires. And perhaps that inspiration can lead to understanding understanding about the creation of a song, and understanding about Christmas and what it means to the world. After all, Austria is music. Even its best-known candies are named after Mozart, and its waltzes have thrilled the world. Outside of home, there's probably no place on earth where one would choose to spend Christmas other than Austria. Here, a white Christmas is the rule, and the thick layer of snow that covers the country is just the beginning.
On the banks of the Seizach River stands Salzburg. It's a splendid old city, once the seat of Prince Archbishops, who were among the most powerful churchmen north of the Alps. Salzburg's streets hold many shrines, a composer of myriad masterpieces. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born in this house at Giedretagasse No. 9. A year after Mozart's death in 1791, another child is born nearby at No. 9 Steingasse. But unlike Mozart, this child is destined to bring about just one musical work, one simple Christmas carol. Anna Skoibering is an unwed mother and barely ekes out a meager livelihood as a knitter. Amid the riches and splendor of Salzburg, hers is a drab life. So much so that when she is wooed by a handsome fusilier in the command of Upper Salzburg, she grasps at a moment of happiness and becomes pregnant out of wedlock. But when her handsome fusilier learns that Anna is carrying his child, he offers her nothing. No wedding ring, no financial help, nothing. I want my child, my son, to bear the name of his father, even though he rejects him. Joseph. Joseph Moore. But I must find a godparent for him. But who will stand up for a baby? born out of wedlock. At last, she finds someone willing to be the godfather. He is Wurmut, the hangman, historically the last hangman of Salzburg. When I was a young man, I stood up as a godfather for someone else's unwanted brat. My godchild grew up to be a no good, and, and years later I had to hang him. Oh, I wonder how this one will turn out. So little Joseph grows up a fatherless waif, feeling very much alone in the world and very lost. Until a churchman takes an interest in the boy and puts him into school. He has a good voice, so he is nudged into the choir. Not yet 16 years old, Joseph enters the seminary at Kremunster in Upper Austria. Here he studies for the priesthood, and here he dwells in a world of books, classic books by ancient Greeks and Romans, and books of theology by the church fathers. Born out of wedlock, the Pope must grant permission for young Joseph to be ordained, and finally, the Pope gives his blessing. At the age of 22, Joseph Moore is ordained a priest. While Joseph is growing up in Salzburg, another lad in another town is struggling to discover his own destiny. His father, Zepp Gruber, is a weaver from a long line of weavers. And Zepp is determined that his young son, Franz, will take up the family profession. After all, weaving is honorable a splendid profession. The key, he tells his son, is to develop nimble fingers for work on the loom. Sadly, Zepp Gruber may be the only Austrian in the world who hates music. To Zepp, music is frivolity and silliness. That's why he is so pleased to see that young Franz is taking his weaving apprenticeship so seriously. But nimble fingers indeed. Nimble fingers for writing music and playing a keyboard and guitar. Unknown to Zepp, a local churchman allows Franz to practice his music in an organ loft. Initially, he is furious. But at last, when he hears him actually play, he relents and allows his son to finally become a musician. Franz Gruber grows up and earns a living as a music teacher in the village of Arndorf. He's comfortable here, a married man who seemed to be continually fathering children. 
often he travels to the nearby village of Ulberndorf to visit a newfound friend there, Joseph Moore, who is the assistant pastor of the parish church of St. Nicholas. <laughs> Father Moore and Franz have much in common. Each has a good voice, and both share a deep love of music. But their good times are not equally enjoyed by Father Moore's superior, a man of little humor who writes to the archbishop. Father Moe lacks the spirit of a subordinate. It is hardly edifying that he goes to public places, smoking his pipe, playing his guitar, and singing songs. Despite the pastor's complaints, the friendship between Franz and Joseph Moore deepens. It is 1818. Christmas is approaching. Returning from the blessing of a newborn child, Moore has been literally overwhelmed by the Madonna-like beauty of the mother and her new baby. As he looks out over the river, his mind races back 2,000 years to another start at night on a hillside in Bethlehem. His emotions overflowing with the power and the beauty of that night so long ago, he begins to catch a vision of the majesty of what actually took place. In the quietness of the moment, he can almost feel the light as it touches Mary's sleeping face. With the eyes of his mind, he sees the angel awakening Mary, announcing the divine child within her womb. Then of the struggle she and her husband Joseph endured as they traveled to Bethlehem, she sitting on the young donkey as Joseph led them across the rocky, barren landscape. But even after arriving at their destination, they were sent away by the innkeepers, only to find rest in a humble stable. There, the Messiah, the Son of God, was born in humility and meekness. Moore drifts back to the reality of the moment, standing there by the river, but looking out over the deafening silence of the snow. He thinks mostly of the stillness, the silence of that holy night. Be still and know that I am God, sang the psalmist. Stillness, holiness. It must have truly been a holy night, a night that forever changed the course of the world. That electric moment has given him a burst of creativity he has never experienced. At home, just minutes later, his study is bitterly cold, but Father Moore fails to notice. Hours pass, one after another, but he never checks the time. He is writing a poem, six stanzas in all. It begins, Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. In English, the words translate, Silent Night, Holy Night. The words capture that moment of wonder in Bethlehem the dire poverty and pain of a woman in labor in a barn crowded with animals, of the basic earthy simplicity of the event, the humility of the shepherds, overwhelmed by the terror and majesty of the moment. That moment when the human soul was engulfed in holiness. But his mind is drawn from his pen as he remembers an impossible situation. For his congregation, Christmas Mass is the high point of the entire holiday season. But the church organ is silent. Mice have eaten through the bellows, and Christmas Eve just around the corner. St. Nicholas is a poor parish, and no one dare make idle promises to the poor. Yet Father Moore makes promises. Liebe Freund, im Glauben, our organ is sadly in need of repair. It stands in silence. Oh, but do not despair. Perhaps a miracle can yet happen. Yes, I, I believe it will be so. This Christmas, there will be beautiful music for all of us. We can't possibly afford a new organ. And the old one seems beyond repair. Without a Christmas miracle, 
Tomorrow night will be a Christmas Eve without music. Then he remembers his poem. One of his poems were put to music, not for a voiceless organ, but for human voices, even with guitar, perhaps. He hurries to the house of Franz Gruber. The Gruber household is fragrant with the smell of evergreen, apples, and cinnamon. Christmas. Franz has taken the family crutch from the attic, a year-end ritual. He is carefully dusting each piece when there's an urgent knocking at the front door. It's his friend, Moore, his eyes shining like Christmas stars. He reads the poem he has written about the first Christmas and implores Franz to set his verses to music. Not for organ, but for violin or even guitar. Can he set the verses to music by tomorrow night? Franz is deeply moved by the sincerity of Moore's poem. He begins setting it to a lullaby-like melody. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. That freezing night as Franz quietly wrote the music is now a faded memory. Just as today, these stones are all that remain of the St. Nicholas Church, where mice had ruined the organ. Terrible and persistent flooding in 1896, 1897, and 1899 eroded the foundations to the point that the entire church had to be closed and finally demolished. Today, a memorial chapel has been built on the site, and inside these magnificent stained glass windows stand as a silent testimony to the first time Silent Night was ever sung. One window showing both Joseph Moore and the town of Uberndorf was a gift from the Ustmarkischen Singing Society of Vienna in 1935. The other, showing Franz Gruber and the town of Arndorf, was a gift from the Vienna Schubert Society, also in 1935. The memorial is a fitting tribute to the poet-priest, the musician, and perhaps even the hungry mice who brought this memorable song into the world. In the year 1818, this was the town of Urbendorf. And this is what Urbendorf was like on that memorable Christmas Eve, seen in this very old archival film footage made at a time closer in spirit to Father Moore's and Franz Gruber's than ours is. Parishioners of St. Nicholas don their historic hand-sewn finery. In most cases, the provincial costumes worn only at special events. Lanterns light the way to church through the vast winter night. During this special time, both peasant and well-to-do join in the sacred celebration. And some are asking, has the Christ child miraculously provided the church with a new organ? But the organ remains mute Instead, there are sounds of a tenor voice accompanied by a guitar. It is unlike any Christmas carol ever heard before. Even today, as we listen to the song, there is an overwhelming feeling of silence, timelessness, and holiness. A gift has been given. And from that moment onward, the course of humanity has been changed until the ending of time. It is a moment indescribable. Never since the instant the Creator divided time into days and nights has there been such a single, solitary moment. That moment is the basis for every year's Christmas. After the holidays, an organ builder named Karl Maurocker arrived to finally repair the church organ. After the work was finished, he asked Franz to sit down and try it out. And the first song he played was Silent Night. 
The organ builder was so entranced by the song, he asked if he could write it down and take it back to his valley of Cedartal. From that moment on, it's difficult to know exactly what happened. But one thing is sure, the song spread like wildfire. So much so that for many years, its creators, Franz Gruber and Joseph Moore, were forgotten. The song had begun to take on a life of its own. It was heard not long after at the fair in Leipzig. Then it was performed before the king and queen of Saxony by four children with reportedly unusual musical abilities. At that time, it was called A Song from Heaven. When it was finally published, it bore the inscription, author and composer unknown. And at one time, it was mistakenly credited to Michael Haydn, brother of the famous composer Joseph Haydn. The King of Prussia, Frederick Wilhelm IV, heard Silent Night for the first time in a command performance at the Imperial Church in Berlin. He was so moved that he declared that this magnificent song be performed at Christmas pageants and concerts throughout the nation, and directed his highest advisors and court musicians to undertake an official search to discover the author and composer. Within the year, the monks of St. Peter's Monastery in Salzburg were contacted, and by an incredible coincidence, the church choir boy was Felix, the son of Franz Gruber. He convinced the monks that the music was his father's, and Franz was finally found in Hallein, where he was now the choir master. During those years, the melody had been carried from town to town under several names. Song from Silatal, Song of Heaven, a Tyrolean carol, and finally just Silent Night. It traveled throughout Austria, to neighboring countries, and within time, to the whole world. In 1863, it was translated into English by Jane Campbell, and finally arrived in America in 1871, where it appeared in Charles Hutchins' Sunday School Hymnal. Franz Gruber and Joseph Moore remained friends as long as they lived, but their visits became less frequent. Franz's work took him to other towns. He had fathered 12 children and had created 70 musical compositions by the time of his death in this house at the age of 76. Sadly, even after the discovery that Franz had written the music, neither he nor Joseph Moore lived to learn of the impact that their hastily written little carol would have on the world. And in the end, Joseph Moore's humorless pastor got his way. Father Moore had been too popular, too playful, so he was transferred from Orbendorf to another parish, and then to another and another. He died of tuberculosis of the lungs at the age of 46. All that he left behind was his chalice, his vestments, his breviary, and the verses to the best love Christmas carol in the world. He is buried in this small cemetery. A wrought iron cross with a rosette crowning his portrait marks his grave. But Silent Night continues to live. After all, Christmas is music.
Today, it's the caroling from the street corners and the airways, from choirs and singers that sustains the Christmas spirit. Christmas is celebrated by a multitude of cultures rejoicing that Christ has come. Anchoring these ethnic fireworks is the gift unparalleled, a gift that was given some 2,000 years ago. And from that moment on, the course of humankind was changed forever. Today, this is the hillside where the angels proclaimed the message to the shepherds. And this is probably the very pathway they walked as they went to the manger scene. Now it is surrounded by the Church of the Nativity here in Bethlehem. Tradition says that this is the site where the birth of Jesus took place, now enshrined and surrounded by Greek Orthodox, Roman Catholic, and Armenian churches. For all people who celebrate Christmas, one carol has captured that timeless moment in Bethlehem. That moment of divine stillness. That moment when the human soul was suddenly engulfed with holiness. The message of Silent Night continues to remind us that on one star-filled evening 2,000 years ago, God shared with us his most precious gift. Desiring our love and longing for us to know him, he became like us. And through the miracle of incarnation, we have the opportunity to touch the infinite. Today, throughout the winter season, Austria welcomes a special kind of visitor, a Christmas pilgrim. They come to see the birthplaces and the burial places, to see Gruber's guitar, to see Urbendorf, to pray in the memorial chapel. And from here, to send their Christmas cards postmarked at the place where Silent Night was written. Then they will return to the modern cosmopolitan city of Vienna, where the more fortunate may hear the Vienna Boys Choir sing the timeless Christmas carol that brought them to Austria in the first place. And the wonder of that Christmas at St. Nicholas Church in 1818 will once again be relived.